Hmm. Something happened there. Let's try that again. All right, so I was done with 3.7. 3.8 won't take me that long either. So I hope to finish that by today. And see if I can sneak in a little bit of 3.9. It's definitely a tougher section. 3.8, I think it's not that bad. It should be material you've seen before. Okay, so schedule-wise, um, on paper, I'm only supposed to do up to 3.8, but I think I can finish 3.8 today. If I can sneak in some of 3.9, that'd be great. Find a Thursday is a holiday. <coughs> And Friday will be a regular day. Um, I'll give you a quiz as normal. I'll tell you hopefully Wednesday what it's on. And we're aiming for the next exam Friday the 23rd. Okay, and that will be our biggest chapter, as you can see. First exam, second exam, third exam, there's 11 sections. And chapter four, a little bit smaller, and chapter five, still smaller, I guess. Okay. All right, so let's do some of 3.8. Just 1 to 11 and 19, so I'll do a lot of those problems, and then that's about it. Okay, so highlight what we're doing. This equation, dy dt equals ky, is the rate of change is proportional to the amount present or the size. And k is a constant. If k is positive, it's a growth. If k is negative, it's a decay. And this leads to this equation, y of t equals y0 e to the kt. Sometimes you put c in front. Okay? And instead of y, it might be n. It might be you know f. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. So y of t, f of t is equal to an initial amount. You can call it c or y0 e to the kt right there, e to the kt. All right. So... Here we go. Number one. Okay, the proportion of protozoa develops with a constant relative growth rate of 0 0.7944 per member per day. Okay, that's the K. They're giving us the K. On day zero, the population consisted of two numbers, two, two members. That's your initial population. That's the C. Find the population after six days. Okay. And again, this is in case those of you who don't want to get the book and you just want to get off of that. There it is. And I'm not sure if I showed this to you yesterday. So there's that for those of you that need it. Up to about nine. So a little bit more if you need to record that. And a little bit more. Next page. I think we just had problem 19, so here's 19 right there. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so problem number one. Here are the key items. The constant they did tell me was 0 0.7944. Okay. So all of these are the same. Y of t equals y0 e to the kt. Sometimes you see A for amount. A of T is A0, E to the KT. It's the same thing. P, maybe P is population. P of T is P0, E to the KT. It's all the same thing. <clears throat> okay, and getting back to language for exponential growth and decay. So Y equals C, E to the KT. If I take the derivative, dy dt, the derivative is the same thing, c e to the kt, then by the chain root times the derivative of the exponent, which is k. So dy dt is k times c e to the kt, which is y, or dy dt is equal to ky. So that's what we've been saying. The rate of change is proportional to the amount present. dy dt is proportional to how much is already there. Okay, so the rate of change depends on how many are there, which perfectly makes sense, you know, how fast is the population growing? Well, how much is already there? Okay, if you only have a little bit, it's not going to reproduce as much as if you already have a lot. <clears throat> okay, so they might show you all of these, but these are equivalent. Okay, so if you want to mark these all down, you may. 
Uh, it's in the recordings. You can check this out, but they all mean the same thing. All right. So number one, to give you the K, to tell you start off with P of zero is two. Okay, so two goes here. The K goes right up there. So my equation is P of T is equal to two E to the K T. Okay, and now they tell me after six hours, so I plug in six here. So this one's just a straight plug in. Okay, Y zero is two E to the K 0 0.7944. And they told me to plug in T is six. So P of six, is 2 e to the 0 0.7944 times 6. Punch it out in your calculator. 235 protozoa. Now, for something like protozoa, people, you should round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so if you punch it in your calculator, the closest whole number is 235. Okay, and again, I usually won't take up class time to show you the calculator part. You can do that as well as I can. But if you're not getting the same number as I'm getting, then come talk to me or talk to somebody else. In other words, check for yourself, but I'm not going to take up class time for this. You can punch all this in your calculator. Hopefully you get 235. Okay. All right. Uh, number three. A bacteria culture initially has 100 cells. Okay. That's your initial amount. That's your P0 or A0. So 100 goes right here. Initial amount. And it grows at a rate proportional to its size. So that language just tells me I'm going to be able to use that formula. Okay, I can use this formula. The rate grows proportional to its size. After an hour, the population has increased to 420. Okay, so the new amount is 420 after one hour. Find an expression for the number of bacteria after three hours. Okay, so what we're going to do here is They told me I have 100 at the beginning. After one hour, so I plug in one for T, the new amount was 420. So my equation now looks like this. 100 goes here. The new amount is 420. I plug in one. <clears throat> so the first thing I need to do is solve for K. And of course, K times one is K. So I divide both sides by 100. 420 divided by 100 is 4.2 equals E to the K. Solve for K. How do I get rid of the E? LN. So take the natural log of both sides. This cancels out. So K is a natural log of 4.2, which is about 1.43508. Okay. Now, that one, if you want the greatest accuracy, you keep every digit. And this one's short enough that I can actually show you the calculation. Ln 4.2. Sorry. 1.43508452529. Okay. Ideally, you can keep every digit, but at least say five digits, 1.43508. Okay. So plug that back in for K. So I now have a formula for the way this population grows. A of T is 100. Either the 1.43508T. Or again, ideally, you keep every digit 1.43508452529. Of course, if you were doing this on a computer and your life depended on it, you, you would literally put down every digit. For now, we'll just say five digits should be good enough. Okay. Now, after I have that, I can ask any question like, how much will it be after two hours, three hours? I plug in the time. Or you can even ask stuff like, okay, when will the population be 200, 500, or whatever? You can plug in there. Okay. So now, answering other questions. Find the number of bacteria after three hours. I plug in three for the time. That's all there is to it. So three goes here. 100. E to the 1.43058 times three comes out to be 7409 bacteria. Okay. C, find the rate of growth after three hours. Okay. So 
if I plug into here, whoops. Sorry, I gotta get something down here. So dy dt is equal to k times y. Okay, so find the rate of growth after three hours. So dy dt is equal to k, and the y we just found to be 7409. So dy dt is 1.435 to k times the 7409. Equals whatever. That's part C. You can just punch it in the machine. And then part D, when will the population reach 10,000? So that's the new amount. The left hand side, I plug in 10,000. So it looks like this 10,000 equals 100 e to the kt. 10,000 equals 100 e to the 1.43508 times the t. Solve for t. Okay, so I divide both sides by 100. Natural log of 100 is equal to e to the 1.4350 t. Ln both sides. So when you take a natural log of both sides, Ln cancels out here, right? So if Ln 100 equals 1.43508 t, I'll throw that to you way on top over here. L in 100 is 1.4305 T divided by 1.43508. Punch in your calculator. T is about 3.21 hours. And hours, you don't have to round to the nearest whole number. Okay? You don't want fractional people. You don't have fractional cells or fractional bacteria. So they should be rounded to the nearest whole number. But time, time can be listed at 3.21 hours. That's okay. So the answer is 3.21 hours. Okay. All right, so that's it for that one. Now for seven. Okay, so here is a <clears throat> chemistry formula. So you chemistry people may have seen something like this. N205 goes to 2NO2 plus 1 half O2. Okay. The rate of reaction of dinitrogen pentoxide, which is this thing, di means 2, pent means 5, so 2 nitrogen atoms and 5 oxygen atoms, I guess, is proportional to its concentration as follows. Negative DN2O5 DT is 0. 0.0005 concentration of N2O5. Okay. Uh, you maybe don't know this if you haven't had chemistry, but when you put those brackets like that, that's the concentration, the concentration of N2O5, dinitrogen pentoxide. Okay, so think of that as a concentration. Okay, they put the negative here. I would rather put it here. So the K is negative 0.0005. Okay, so that's what you want. Find an expression for the concentration of N2O5 after T seconds of the initial concentration is C. Okay, so the main thing is the K is negative 0 0.0005. So I'll show you what we have now. All right, so I wrote the chemical reaction there. <clears throat> and negative D N205 DT, that's like DY DT, equals 0 0.0005. The K is negative 0 0.0005. Okay, they made it a little bit tricky by putting a negative here, but multiply both sides by negative one, it looks like this. So dy dt, as it were, y is the concentration of N2O5 is negative 0.0005t. This is the k. So here it is. A of t is c e to the negative 0.0005t. C is the initial amount. You see the initial concentration is c. Okay, now part b. How long will the reaction take to reduce the concentration of N2O5 to 90% of its original value? Okay, so as time goes by, the concentration of N2O5 decreases. How come? Because K was negative. Because the N2O5 is changing into 2NO2 and some oxygen, right? <clears throat> so 90% of the original is 0.90C. 
So this should be part B, I guess. Point 90C is equal to C e to the negative 0 0.0005 t. So this here is the interpretation of 90% of the original. Okay, 90% of the original, 0 0.90 c. Notice if you divide both sides by c, it's gone. So you may notice in this problem, they never told me the initial concentration. Turns out you don't need it. Because as you can see, whatever the original concentration was, you just divide it out and it's gone. So here's an example of not needing the initial concentration of N205, just divide it and it's gone. So now I have 0 0.90, 0 0.90 equals E to the negative 0 0.0005T. And you know the way the game works. How do I get rid of that E? Natural log. So ln 0.90 equals ln E to the whatever. This cancels out, ln and E cancels out. So ln 0.90, is negative 0.0005t. Divide both sides by negative 0 0.0005. Punch it in the calculator. You get 211 seconds. Okay. But normally you prefer to answer in terms of minutes, right? And usually when you have a number like this, well, if a number is less than 60 seconds, you just say, okay, 55 seconds or 37 seconds. But 211 seconds, you prefer to change that to minutes. Okay, so that's roughly 3.5 minutes. 210 seconds is exactly 3.5 minutes, so add another second. But we say it's about 3.5 minutes. Okay, so ln of 0.9 divided by negative 0 0.0005 is 211. That one's short enough that I think I can show you. ln 0.9 divided by negative 0 0.0005. So ln 0.9 divided by negative 0.005, 210.7, call it 211 seconds, which is roughly three and a half minutes. So there we go. Okay. Okay, and then there's only one more I was going to show you, and then I'm pretty much done. Okay. Um, this one that I want to show you. Let's see. Problem number nine. The half life of cesium 137 is 30 years. <clears throat> okay, so half life means the amount of time it takes to reduce to one half the original amount. It takes 30 years for cesium 137 to reduce to half its amount. And by the way, don't use this 137 anymore. That's the particular isotope, as it's called, of cesium. Okay, so it's a particular type of, type of cesium. There's cesium-137. There may also be cesium-136 or maybe cesium-138. Okay, this is one type of cesium. Okay, the 137 is basically the, the mass of the nucleus, as it were, the protons plus the neutrons. That's getting more complicated than we care. But the main thing is you're not using the 137. Okay, it names the cesium. Cesium 137, 30 years. Okay, suppose we have a 100 milligram sample. Okay, that tells me the initial amount. I'm starting with 100 again. Okay, find the mass that remains after T years. Okay, so I have to use the half life. <clears throat> so here's how I use the half life. So A of T is the initial amount, 100 E to the K T. Again, in general, A of T is A0, E to the KT. A0 is the initial amount, or maybe P0, population, or Y0. So 100 goes here. Now, it says the half-life is, where'd it go? 30 years. So after 30 years, how much will I have left? I'll have 50. How to get to 50? It's half of 100. So I plug in 50 here equals 100 e to the k times 30. <clears throat> okay, so one more time. They said half life was 30 years. So I plug in 30, the amount get re gets reduced by half. So half of 100 is 50. So 
50 equals 100, e to the k times 30. Solve for k. Divide by 100. 50 divided by 100. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5 equals e to the 30k. How do I get rid of e? Ln. Cancels out. Ln 0. 0.5 and 30k. Divide both sides by 30. K is ln 0. 0.5 divided by 30. Punch it in the machine. And I got negative 0. 0.0231. And it should be a negative number, right? I anticipated a negative number because I know this is a decay situation. <clears throat> and a quick side note about E, noticing E and ln showing up quite a bit for these kind of problems. We're not doing log base 10. We're not doing log base 2. We're doing log base E. Hence, it's called natural log. It's a naturally occurring log. So in your calculator, right, you have an ln. It's much more natural than log base 10. Okay. A lot of applied word problems like this, we're doing a lot of ln stuff. Okay. We're not doing much of any other base. Okay. So that's why there's a button for ln, even though E is such a weird number, right? 2.71828 or something like that. Okay. So natural log, naturally occurring logarithm. All right. So this is my equation, and now I can answer anything else about it. So let's see. How much of the sample remains after 100 years? I plug in 100. So where are we? A of 100 is 100 e to the negative 0 0.231 times 100. Punch in the machine, 9.92 milligrams. Okay, now you could actually get a feel for this by the half-life concept. Okay, let's see, the half-life was what, 30 years? Okay, so follow this logic. So after one half-life, 30 years, 50. Another half-life, another 30 years, 60 total, half of 50, 25. Another half-life, another 30 years, so 90 years total, Half of 25, 12.5. Okay, so after three half lives, 90 years, 12.5. So a little bit more, 100 years, 9.92. Okay, it's reasonable. It does sound reasonable. So if my answer came out to be like 57 something, that would be too big. But it does seem reasonable. Okay, then part C. After how long will only one milligram remain? So one milligram becomes the left-hand side, the Y of T. <clears throat> okay. So I plug in one, <clears throat> one equals 100 E to the negative 0.0231 T, solve for T. Divide by 100, one over 100 is 0.01. Take a natural log of both sides, ln, ln, this cancels out. ln of 0.01 is negative 0.0231t, divide by negative 0.0231, both sides. Punch in the calculator, 199.35 years, almost 200 years would be the answer. Okay, so if this thing decays at the same rate, and this is making a big assumption that there's no changes, right? There's no um, cesium that's introduced to the system and nothing sneaks out somehow. Okay, then after almost 200 years, it would be gone one milligram. Okay. All right, folks, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll just mention some things quickly for number 11. There's a lot of reading here for number 11. But key ideas, you have something called carbon-14. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. So work it out just like this one, only you're starting with uh, a half-life of 5,730, it looks like. Okay. And then it says something like um, a parchment decays to 74% of the original. So instead of uh, somewhere before, wasn't there a problem that said 90% of the original? Yeah. 
90% of the original, you have 74% of the original. So use the same strategy for number 11 as number seven if you're stuck, okay? The only difference is instead of 90% of the original, it's 74%, so that would be 0.74C. And the half-life, instead of plugging in uh, whatever, 30 or um, whatever, this one, you're gonna be plugging in what, 5730? And then go from there. Okay, and let's see, the last problem I think was 19. Was 19 there? Here's our assignment list, number 19. <clears throat> It seems like it's a little different, but it isn't. It's pretty much the same. The rate of change of atmospheric pressure with respect to altitude H is proportional to P. Okay. So this time you're doing dP dH, rate of change of pressure with respect to height, altitude. Okay. So you know when you go higher in altitude, the air pressure is lower, right? Okay, so uh, San Francisco Bay Area, we're pretty much all at sea level, right? But you can go to some places where, you know, you're 1,000 uh, feet up, 2,000 feet up, a mile up, then the atmospheric pressure is lessened, so it's harder to breathe, right? If you go really high, then it's much less. Okay, so let's see. At sea level, you're at 101.3, so that's your initial amount. So your 101.3 is going to be here. Okay. And instead of T, this would be an H. Okay. I'm not going to write it because I want you to try to figure it out on your own, but I will say, uh, looks like 101.3 goes here. Instead of K times T, it's K times H. It's proportional to the height. Okay. And then let's see, when you're 1,000 meters up, that's roughly 3,000 feet then the pressure is only 87.14. Okay, so you have everything you need. So 87.14 goes here. The initial pressure, sea level, is 101.3. So 87.14 here, 101.3 here, and instead of T, this is H, and the height you're going to plug in 1,000. Okay. And then you work out the rest. So first you got to figure out the K. And once you find the K, uh, you would plug in 3,000. And then uh, you plug in a separate problem, 6187 it looks like. Okay, and that does it. Okay, so the remaining amount of time, we might finish a little early today, but I'll talk a little bit about related rates, just a little. So I might give you some time for questions and answers, um, depending on how long I want to blab on related rates. But the little bit I do now will save us time um, tomorrow when we go on to 3.9. And again, because we don't have school on Thursday, you know, I want to make sure that I stay ahead of the game a little bit. Okay, related rates. So what is related rates? So for related rates, what's happening now is we're always going to take a derivative with respect to T which is time, okay? So I'll let you look at some of this, but everything here is something with a T, dV, dT, dR, dT, rate of change of volume with respect to time, rate of change of radius with respect to time, dV, dT, dR, dT, and so on, okay? So now we're definitely using the Leibniz notation Leibniz, the D stuff, L-E-I-B-N-I-Z, Leibniz notation. You don't have to remember that. But if you just look casually at what they give us, okay, dr, dt, dx, dt, dy, dt, right? So everything, we're taking derivative with respect to time. Okay, so let me give you my version of this, 3.9 related rates. <clears throat> So in related rates, we differentiate with respect to T, which is time. Every variable needs a D variable DT when we differentiate. <clears throat> okay. 
Now, remember when we were doing implicit differentiation a while back, right? Implicit differentiation. We said, okay, pretend Y is a function of X. So if I take the derivative and there's an X, just take the regular derivative. But if there was a Y, remember what happened when you had a Y? When you differentiate with respect to Y? Like Y squared. How do you differentiate Y squared? You went 2Y times dy dt, right? So every y needed a dy dt. So guess what? Now, every variable needs a d variable dt. So that means x needs dx dt, y needs dy dt, etc. So no variable is exempt. Every letter needs a d letter dt. Okay. And Here's a perfect example of this, and I'll be done in a few minutes. So when I'm done, maybe two or three minutes, then I'll let you ask questions if you have any. Okay, let's look at x squared plus y squared equals one. Unit circle. If we were doing implicit differentiation, right? You would go like this. Two x, derivative of x squared is two x. Derivative of y squared, however, is two y dy dx, because there's a y there equals the derivative of the right-hand side, which is zero, <clears throat> and then et cetera. You have to solve for dy dx. Under related rates, though, here's the way it works. Same equation, same equation. So it makes a difference whether you're doing implicit differentiation or related rates. <clears throat> With related rates, there's always time involved. So you might say to yourself, well, how do you know if I'm doing implicit differentiation or related rates. Well, number one, they might say so, right? The wording might be, hey, we're doing implicit differentiation. Okay. But for related rates problems, okay, you're always going to have time involved. Okay. So not to mention we're on the section that says related rates, right? Related rates. But if you see time involved, then you know it's related rates. So notice the way this one works. Same equation. Notice same equation. But this is 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals the derivative of 1 is 0. So no variable is exempt. So it's almost like when we were doing x for implicit differentiation. Okay, x is exempt. Just do 2x as normal. But for y, you got to go 2y dy dx. Now for this related rate, there's no exemptions as it were. Every letter needs a d letter dt. Every variable needs a d variable dt. So x needs a dx dt, y needs a dy dt. If I had a z, I would have dz dt, and et cetera. Okay, and let me show you this from the book, and then I'm done. x squared plus y squared equals 100. I'm on page 246. So notice what they did. 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt is equal to zero. Okay. And then you might have to solve for one of these, like solve for dy dt. Then I throw that over and a little bit of algebra. dy dt equals negative x over y dx dt. Okay. So we're going to see stuff like this. Okay. All right, so this section is called related rates, okay. where two or more quantities are related based on time, okay. and the book starts out on 245. Okay, so let me show you some of the problems, and that's about it. And then I'll open up the questions in about a minute. So we have what? So I'm done with this. So 1 to 13 odd, 17, 23, 29, 37. And so let me show you some of that. So here's page 249, for those of you who don't have the text. And that's on about 16, a little bit more, and a little bit more. Okay, and then the next page, more, and a little bit more there, and more there. And how far do we got to go? 37 and here's 37. Yeah, so give me the better stuff there. Okay, so I'm done, folks. So let me stop the share. See if there are questions in the chat.
seven A one more time. Okay. Go back to seven A. Seven A. So this is the equation that they gave us. So pretend this is Y, that N2O5 stuff, the concentration of N2O5, just pretend it's Y. And if I multiply both sides by negative one, it's dy dt is negative 0.0051. Y. In other words, it looks like, where did it go? It looks like that. dy dt is negative 0.0005 Y. This is functioning just like y. So that gives me the k. All right, so the k goes up there as the exponent, c e to the negative 0.005t. Okay, and then I go from there. Okay, so I think that's what you wanted. Um, but yeah, that's what happens there. Okay, uh, that's that. Anybody else with a question, please? Otherwise, we're done for the day. So you can put it in the chat or unmute yourselves. Anybody? No? Okay. So we're done. So tomorrow I'll start related rate problems. And remember, Thursday there's no, no school, I should say. And then Friday we'll meet up again. All right. That'll do it for today, folks. So have a good afternoon. And we'll see you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, Professor. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.